This is the Northampton Conservation Commission for the 11th of uh, May, 2023. The commission is a group of unpaid volunteers who work to protect the natural environment of Northampton. We are concerned with the eight interests defined in the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act, and our duties also include open space acquisition and management. We operate in a way that's consistent with open meeting law requirements. All meeting dates, times, and agendas are posted in advance, and we invite public comment during our meetings, however, asking the public to limit their comments to issues that are within our purview. Today's agenda includes uh, a notice of intent for routine maintenance and repair activities on municipal properties, this by the Northampton Department of Public Works, uh, and a request for determination of applicability to determine if a driveway and parking lot extension in the riverfront area of Bottoms Brook uh, is subject to the Wetlands Protection Act or the Northampton Ordinance. We also have a request for a certificate of compliance on Federal Street um, and a request for day use of uh, the Montview Conservation Parcel. Um, and we'll see at that point whether there's any other items that have come up since the agenda was prepared. Uh, first, uh, is there any, we don't have any uh, minutes today, correct, Sarah? Uh, correct, no, not today. Okay, so the first uh, item is, are there any public comment not having to do with a specific case that we'll be addressing today? If not, we'll move on to the uh, first hearing. Uh, notice of intent for routine maintenance and repair activities on municipal properties, rights of way easements, roads, and structures within the buffer zone to wetland, water bodies, and banks, riverfront area, land subject to flooding, and streams and channels. This is a, uh, a new application for a kind of thing that comes up periodically, and we have improved, uh, approved and extended in the past, and it was extended additionally because of COVID, but um, it, all things come to an end. And um, uh, so we're going to review that again. Uh, who's presenting for that for the city? Uh, I'll be presenting for the DPW. Hi, right, Joanna. <clears throat> Hi. Um, so good evening. Um, actually, I have a, a PowerPoint presentation I can share if that works. Yeah, you should be able to. Okay. okay. Are folks able to see that? Uh, not yet. Not nope. yet. Okay. Let's try that again. <clears throat> now you got it. Okay. All right. Oh, let's see. Okay. Is that full screen? There we go. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> Great, thank you. Um, good evening, my name is Johanna Stacy. I'm the Senior Environmental Planner with the Northampton DPW and I'm joined tonight by Donna Lascalia, the DPW Director. I'm here this evening to present the DPW's bundled notice of intent for routine maintenance and repair activities, which covers work on city properties, rights of way, easements, roads, and structures. DPW's intention is to request an order of conditions for minor and common activities. <clears throat> many of which are exempt under the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act, but not under the local ordinance. This BNOI identifies the types of work that are covered and the resource areas where work would take place. It's not intended to be a blanket permit and separate NOIs would be needed for work in um, waterways and wetlands. Um, so I want to provide a little bit, I think Kevin already addressed this, um, but just to just to provide a little bit of background on this, um, the DPW has had a bundled order of conditions for several years. The first, I believe, was issued in 2008. Um, in 2015, it was reorganized um, and submitted, and an order of conditions was issued in 2015. That was renewed in 2018, and the 2021 renewal was extended to January 2020. 23 <clears throat> under the COVID emergency order. Um, that's since lapsed. And so this 
bundled notice of intent is submitted and it's pretty much identical to the previous one. Um, there have been a few corrections for clarity, but otherwise it's it's basically the same. Um, there are six categories of activities in this or bundle notice of intent. Category one is activities that are exempt under the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act. Category two is activities that are exempt per the Wetland Protection Act regulations. Category three is activities that occur in the buffer zone, but not within resource areas. Category four activities are those that occur in the buffer zone and in certain resource areas. Category five is activities that occur in both buffer zone and some resource areas that would require prior notification of the Conservation Commission. <clears throat> the last category is activities that would have a direct impact generally to wetlands or waterways where a separate and um, notice of intent would be required. So just to sort of review the, the administration of the permit, um, these type of maintenance activities are supervised um, ultimately by the DPW director, um, as well as the city engineer, highway superintendent, and water superintendent. Um, this, this permit covers work on city property, including city rights of way, utility easements, and previously degraded and disturbed areas. Um, it covers the following resource areas, buffer zones to bank and bordering vegetated wetland, land subject to flooding, riverfront area, and streams and channels only in dry conditions. <clears throat> and we do want to acknowledge that any proposed work in priority or, or estimated habitat um, would require a consultation with um, natural heritage. Um, so looking at any conservation commission notification and the sequence of work, um, DPW would notify the conservation commission planner of any work proposed in a resource area so we can confirm whether or not it's covered under the permit or whether it would require a separate NOI. Um, DPW staff that's planning to conduct a maintenance activity would check with the senior environmental planner, myself, um, to confirm whether the work would be located in endangered species habitat, outstanding resource waters, vernal pools, or other sensitive, sensitive areas. Um, <clears throat> if, if we need to hold a site visit, we would hold a site visit with um, the Conservation Commission planner, Sarah. Um, likewise, if a DPW superintendent needed to discuss a particular maintenance activity um, with the Conservation Commission, they might request to hold a site visit as well. Um, in general, the DPW Senior Environmental Planner would be the person identifying uh, jurisdictional resource areas on behalf of the DPW. Um, and for maintenance activities and erosion and sedimentation controls would be installed prior to work and would be maintained throughout the activity. Um, so I just wanted to review some of the um, types of activities that are included in each of the categories. Um, category one and two includes activities that are exempt um, under the Mass Massachusetts Wetland Protection Act or regulations that would occur in riverfront areas or resource area buffer zones. <clears throat> These projects include things like maintaining, replacing, or repairing, but not enlarging public utilities like sewer and water, um, maintenance of roads, utility lines, parking lots in riverfront area, installation of underground utilities and paved and unpaved areas, <clears throat> installation, repair, replacement of signs, braces, and supports, um, pavement uh, pavement repair, so long as we're not widening or Im increasing impervious area, um, and vegetation cutting for road safety, um, just to clear guardrails and maintain site distances. Category three activities are activities located in buffer zones, but not in resource areas. <clears throat> so this would, um, activities covered in this permit would be parking lot or driveway resurfacing, but not expanding the footprint, um, catch basin cleaning, and with disposal, proper disposal of material, 
um, embankment stabilization, guardrail repair and replacement, um, athletic field maintenance <clears throat> and infrastructure repair and replacement of existing um, things like sidewalks, signage, lighting, et cetera. Category four activities are those that would be occurring in a buffer zone in some resource areas, um, including riverfront area, land subject to flooding and inland bank. Um, <clears throat> so activities that fall under this category include cleaning ditches and swales, um, assuming dry conditions. So there's no flowing water. Um, repairing riprap channels. Um, planting vegetative filter strips, infrastructure repair and replacement, such as replacing guardrails, um, sidewalk signs, um, maintaining the dams, dikes, and flood control st structures, um, and lastly, snow storage and disposal. Um, currently, snow storage occurs in Maine's field, which is within a uh, riverfront area and floodplain area. <clears throat> um, and there's some snow storage also at the DPW yard, um, which is not in a resource area. Uh, category five activities are those which would um, require notification of the for the Conservation Commission. Um, they might be located in a buffer zone <clears throat> or in a resource area. These activities include maintenance and repair of structural conveyances, um, bypass pumping in the unlikely event that um, maybe there was a culvert blockage or something, um, installing sediment traps <clears throat> or subsurface drains. Lastly, notice of intent um, would be required for any work taking place in a bordering vegetated wetland or land under water, waterways or wetlands. Um, or vernal pools. Um, so just to provide some examples of how these categories apply to some of the work, um, some of the DPW projects and activities that have been done recently. Um, <clears throat> the activities on the screen would be those that fall under category one or two, where they're exempt maintenance activities, um, including things like a sign installation or pavement replacement within the same footprint, um, like was done on Spring Street, um, or the water line replacements that took place on Autobahn Road. <clears throat> Some other examples um, of activities that are covered under category four um, include removing vegetation on the Connecticut River levee on the left, um, which would be in riverfront area. Um, and the bottom of the levee is actually located in bordering land subject to flooding. Um, maintaining lawn and recreational fields um, on the right is Florence Field, which is located in bordering land subject to flooding um, and riverfront area. Um, some examples of DPW projects that have required a permit um, under category six included a culvert replacement for a culvert downstream of North Farms Road. This was near um, Fitzgerald Lake. Uh, and on the right, there was a culvert slip lining project um, that was done as part of the Birds Pit Road paving project. So the slip lining itself um, required a notice of intent. Um, you know, DP, DEP had a few comments. We just wanted to sort of address those. Um, one comment re um, related to um, sort of clarifying which items in category two pertain to the riverfront area versus riverfront area and buffer areas. Um, so we just wanted to acknowledge that we understand that the first two bullets are really um, <clears throat> apply only to the riverfront area, not to buffer areas. Um, there was a comment about regrading gravel roads. Uh, just want to 
note that this was included in the previous order of conditions, but um, if it's something that should be recategorized, um, that, that can, that would be fine. Um, for culverts, we just wanted to clarify that the intention, I think culverts came up a couple times in the um, notice of intent application. Just want to clarify that we'd be removing debris in as low flow conditions as possible to to eliminate a blockage. Um, the intention wouldn't be to to scoop or excavate any sediment. <clears throat> um, there was a comment about untreated stormwater, and we understand this would be something that would need to be addressed in a separate notice of intent. Um, and lastly, the. There was a DEP comment about um, a butter notification since it's a bundled notice of intent um, applying to the whole the whole city. Um, so our for notification, we did post a yellow public um, notice sign in front of the D DPW base one at Locust Street. Um, and the public notice was also shared in the DPW website um, construction updates page. So that's how we address the the notification requirements. Um, and that wraps up my presentation. Um, we welcome any questions. Questions from commissioners? Um, just the equipment for clarity's sake. And, and one is I appreciate the, the clarity and quality of this application. It was yeah. really easy to read and understand. It makes our life so much easier. Um, just, just a quick question uh, for category four, the maintain repair dams, dikes, and flood control structures. Is there a threshold um, that you have before you come and submit a notice of intent for for work? Because I know the, the routine maintenance dam, removing vegetation, things like that is, is pretty straightforward, but I'm sure there's a, a level of work that would um, cause a more substantial disturbance. Is, is, and I was just curious if you had a specific threshold for that work or you look at each activity independently yeah i think we i think that would probably be something where we would um reach out to to sarah or to the conservation commission to see if um the activity would really trigger a more more thorough um review <clears throat> um yeah, and it, it hasn't come up yet, but I could envision this like if the South Street drop structure on in inland underwater had to be replaced, for example, that's certainly something that would trigger another permit. Okay. Yeah, I mean, on its I, own, they're working together, so I'm I'm fine. I was just curious how it was typically handled. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think when we did the debris removal for the South Street drop structure. I believe do we have an NOI for that? You did. Um, I believe we um, did. And <clears throat> a lot of it is within endangered species habitat. Right. So it would trigger some type of permitting or review in any case. Um and you know, to the extent that other resource areas would be involved, that would trigger additional permitting as well. Thank you. Joanna, I had a, a question about mostly about DEP's comment about the um, fill and bordering land subject to flooding. Um, so we've always interpreted this, and maybe we can just clarify it in the order if one is issued, that this is related to basically to grade leveling of potholes. And it's, you know, it's not intended to allow, you know, trucks of fill to be placed within the floodplain, but just to allow that that additional grading. And you can't work with the material that's on site, you know, and, you know ad nauseum. Okay. So it's sometimes seasonally the, the potholes do need to be filled. Is that how DPW was interpreted? Right. Um I that would certainly make sense. Um I I can't speak to that specifically or how or how the highway department would interpret that. Um I don't know, Donna. Do you have any insights 
Yeah. Hi. Good evening. Hey, yeah. I mean, it's a it's a little tricky, like down in the meadows, if we're we're talking about or or a dirt road. I mean, I mean, a lot of times, you know, you end up with such deep ruts or or some type of erosion there just from weather. You know, heavy traffic driving at inappropriate speeds or something. So we would have to bring in a little bit of material. Um, you know, but it's it's limited. I mean, we have done that in various locations in, in the past, but it it's limited, and we understand we're not you know, um, in the road building business, um, in places where we shouldn't be. So, um, it, you know, it's a case by case basis, but obviously you can't, you know, move like no dirt around forever. You know, we have to have some sort of a, a road base. So, so there's definitely times where we do have to bring in material, but it, it's, it's nothing substantial. So if the issue is flood storage, uh, I assume, Sarah, we could just include in the order of conditions that this is bringing gravel roads back up to uh, a given level, not raising that level. Correct. Yeah, and, and that would clarify the, the understanding that we've been yeah. operating under, I think, for the since this generic permit has existed. Other questions from commissioners? No. Nope. The me. Is there, I don't know. I can't see if there's any members of the public on the call, but are there any questions from members of the public? If not, Sarah, any last questions or comments before we close the hearing? Uh, I guess I would just point out that this doesn't, this wouldn't require the standard conditions because most of those are for specific construction projects. So I, I just suggested um, uh, let's see, the, noting specifically that it doesn't permit any work within priority or estimated habitat, would, which it wouldn't, um, and that all other required permits need to be obtained prior to conducting work. So those are just for clarification. And then also clarifying the, the gravel road issue, mostly in the meadows. All right. Uh, someone want to make a motion to close the hearing? Moved. And the second? Second. All second. Uh, all in favor, Sarah? Roll call. All right, so roll call for that. Jen? Yes. Sorry, my unmute button disappeared. <laughs> uh, Randy? Yes. David? Yes. Paul? Yes. Mason? Yes. And Kevin? Yes. All right. Uh, so, uh, someone want to make a motion uh, to issue an order of conditions in response to this notice of intent uh, with those couple of additional uh, conditions that we discussed, like bringing gravel roads up to level rather than raising that level for flood storage purposes. Uh, and Sarah's comment that the standard conditions need not apply because it's not about a specific project, it's more generic. Um, any other special conditions? If not, someone want to make a motion to grant an order of conditions as described. So moved. Is there a second? Second. David, as a second, uh, any further discussion? If not, all in favor, roll call again, Sarah. Jen? Yes. Randy? Yes. David? Yes. Paul? Yes. Mason? Yes. And Kevin? Yes. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. And we are a couple of minutes past 550, so we can move on to the uh, next case, which is a request for determination of applicability to determine if driveway and parking lot extension uh, in a riverfront Broughton's book, Brook, I have to say, I've driven past there many times. I never realized there was a brook um, back there. So uh, yeah. this yeah. was new learning for me. Is that, whether that is subject to the Wetlands Act or the Wetlands Ordinance, who's presenting for that? You're muted. I think Dylan's talking. <laughs> huh. How about yeah. now? Better, better. better. <laughs> Technology. 
Um, so my name is Dylan Courtney. Uh, I work for Happy Oak Construction. Uh, we're a wholly owned subsidiary of Kyder Corporation. Um, and presenting on behalf of Carol McElhone, uh, Carol McElhone um, and the Children's Advocacy, Advocacy Center uh, of Hampshire County um, uh, for a parking lot um, that we're going to rehab and uh, repave uh, with here, uh, Grace. Um, so this is at 593 Elm Street. Um, I didn't prepare a PowerPoint, but as well as uh, Johanna did, but um, do you want me to share my screen so we can go through the the RDA form or or how is that typically done? Maybe your map. See. The map, yeah. Okay, let me uh so hold on one moment. I'm not sure where exactly on Elm Street this is. Right by Federal Street. Yeah, it's the intersection opposite the intersection with federal. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think this is going to be the right. Here we go. Mm -hmm. And a firewall. Oh. Is this a place at Smith School worked on? I'm happy to jump in. I'm Kara McElhone. I'm the executive director of the CAC of Hampshire County. And yes, it, it, it's the building that in 2006, uh, Smith rehabbed. And, you know, since then, we've been providing services for abused children out of that location. Okay. Oh, thank you, Sarah. Oh, I got a firewall. Let me share. We have copies of the sketch, so seeing it. If you if you just want to walk through the project, that might work. Okay, so uh, yeah, sorry, I can't share this for some reason. Sarah, are you are you sharing? Oh, here we go. <laughs> yeah, that's working. So yeah, it's that lot kind of in the south center from the, the uh, farm fields there at Smith Polk. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Gremlins. Yeah, my Zoom uh, crashed. Sorry about that. That's the first time that ever happened. We've um, over. <laughs> so so the plan for the project is to remove the existing asphalt. Um, to regrade it, um, add a little bit of extra area for the parking uh, needs uh, of the uh, of the advocacy advocacy center, and uh, and to repave that um, and dress it up nice with uh, with loam and seed. So it's adding about a thousand square foot. I don't know if you've got the drawings in front of you. Um, I do. Um, so that's roughly uh, what our plan is. And um, I guess it's up to you guys as if it's far enough away from, from the, the buffer zone. And uh, I was not able, I'm, out of, I'm in Vermont right now, I was not able to uh, uh, do a site visit uh, but it, it looks from the photos uh, that the uh, the brook, which I didn't know existed, is to the northeast of uh, the proposed parking uh, extension. Correct. Is that right? And I couldn't tell the topography where the slope is. Um, um, well, it's got a slight eastward slope. Um, into the adjoining field there, um, and then uh, you know works its way back to the brook in that general direction. Anyway, just a quick question: Is the field motor maintained, or is it 
And is it even your property? <laughs> no, it's not. It's Smith Vogue okay. who owns and maintains it. Yeah, our property juts into part of it, but, okay. um, but we work closely with Smith Vogue. Yeah, because you'll you'll drain, your parking lot will drain into that property. Is that correct? Yeah. It looks that way, right. Yeah. And, and are you running the uh, the expansion of the parking lot right up to the property line or? or? Um, uh, you know, I didn't put any pins on this, but uh, I think we have, I believe we have 15 feet. Okay. Yeah, because one of the things I'd strongly encourage you to do is, is some kind of plantings um, between your property and, and Smith Folk just to. Oh, help. I would. We've been working closely with Smith Folk about we're also doing a therapeutic garden in the back with some landscapers. And, you know, they're they're great partners with us in terms of the services we provide to kids. And so, yeah. Yes, yeah, so you'll have a bigger space with, with water sheeting off. So it'd be nice to have something to catch it better. Yep. Thanks. Good questions, comments from commissioners? Sounds like a nice enhancement to the property. Yeah, and Dylan, Sarah did point out that, that you can't extend towards the street. You'll find that when you, you get your permits from the city. Right, right. It's, yep. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I, I don't have any more concerns. It's, it's pretty flat until you get right down to the brook and drops yeah. us a bit. So. I see. Okay, that, that's what I wasn't able to tell from the uh, documents, and I wasn't able to get out there. Any other questions, comments? I would love to invite you all to come take a tour of our facility and see the services that we provide for kids who are abused in Hampshire County. But <laughs> well, hey, really great mission. Uh, Thank you. I have seen it, and it is remarkable, and it's beautiful. Thank you. Paul's a lifelong social worker, um, as is my wife, and um, so. Familiar with that kind of work. Not haven't been inside that building. Well, come okay. on over. Give me a call. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so it's an RDA. We do not need uh, uh, to close a hearing. Um, but for those who did the site visit, we have to, uh, as Sarah stated in her staff report, we we can um, say it. Uh, we can check box two and that it will not damage the resource area, even though it's um, uh, potentially jurisdictional. But we, that was only if we can be assured that it's going to not uh, have any negative impact on the resource area, which is the basis of my topography uh, question. But um, for those who got there, is it clear that that's it's not going to... Um, because we could in, in, impose conditions like, okay, we well, can't use salt on the parking. We could do things to to protect the resource area if, in fact, the drainage is the, going in the wrong direction. But I don't. I, I wasn't there, so I can't say whether that's important or not. I, I can't share my screen for some reason. Every time I do that, Zoom crashes on me. But there, there's a slight um, slope towards the the river, which is about a hundred, maybe sixty feet away. Yeah, it's, it's about so a it's one in 10, outside. slightly less than one in 10 slope. Sorry, Randy, I didn't hear what you said. It's it's about one in 12 slope uh -huh. um, towards the river for about 125 feet. And then it, then it slopes down to the further to the stream. So, so it's I'm more likely to infiltrate there. than it'll, it'll be more likely to infiltrate than sheet flow directly into the. Yeah, but what do you, what do you think about the uh, salt on the driveway kind of question, which is usually the the thing we might require? Yeah, no opinion. No opinion. <laughs> Calcium chloride instead of sodium chloride. Uh -huh. It'll fertilize the lawn as it's way, making its way to the. <laughs> Yeah, but were the field owned by the applicant, I would definitely suggest some sort of pollinator activity, but that that's not an option here. So maybe some that's combination a of owner. trees and uh, yeah. shrub species. Um, so um, we could uh, say that uh, 
we have a negative determination in checking box two because it will not damage the resource area. Is that someone want to make a motion to that effect? So oh, I didn't ask. I didn't ask for wait just a second. Oh. I didn't ask if there are any questions from the public. I can't tell on Zoom whether there are members of the public and whether they want to ask any questions. But if not, okay, now, uh, motion to uh, uh, issue a negative determination checking box two that will not uh, damage a resource area. Somebody made a, a move. Mason, a Mason moved it. Yep. Okay. Paul second. <laughs> Mason made, Paul seconded. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor, Sarah? Jen? Yes. Randy? Yes. David? Yes. Paul? Yes. Mason? Yes. And Kevin? Yes. Unanimous. All right, thank you. Now we have a request for compliance uh, for that uh, little home that's been getting rebuilt for the last year or so uh, by the Federal Street entrance to the uh, Greenway along the Mill River. So I guess means the this must mean the work is finally getting close to done. It's been a long time. Uh, it was actually I, the request was precipitated by the thought that they there are some other things that they would like to do that are not included <laughs> in the application. So another application will be forthcoming. Ah, <laughs> I see. <laughs> the plot thickens. Okay, so um, this is to say they've done what they were going to do, and if they want to do anything else, they got to ask again. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, and I did a site visit the other day and, you know, according to specifically what's included in the design plans and the order, you know, yes, it's been complied with. But now that they've cut the um, the knotweed, which is already starting to grow again, it's really evident that there's there's nothing on that bank at all. It, you know, it's just bare soil. Well, I um, saw your photo. It looks like bare dirt. Yeah. Dirt. And you there, know, was, there was a recent flooding about two weeks ago. Yeah, and I imagine whatever had been there got washed away at that spring. Yeah, soil. and part of part of the insidious effects of knotweed is that it, you know, it changes the chemical composition of the soil and makes it very much harder for native vegetation to grow. Um, oh. So knowing that another application is coming up, um, the commission should communicate to the applicant that a you know a really significant revegetation plan should be required, or or else the that bank is going to start to disappear essentially so what, what does the knot we do to the soil it makes i'd have to look it up. i read a i read a fascinating study just about all of the horrible things that not we does and that was that was one of the what a way to kill in your resource yeah, what a find... way off its competitors yeah, right. yeah i mean you know some some invasives will uh come out earlier in the spring or die back <laughs> later in the fall and that's one of the ways that they outcompete that they each have their you know yeah. tips and tricks yeah it, it provides so much shade it basically knocks out anything that's not not weed wow underneath it um how recent are these photos uh the the ones that i took are the ones in the in the, the six record. six photos here uh two weeks ago maybe oh because of the the air areas are so bare, like it shows in these photos. I was gonna, they uh, well, maybe they ought to wait a while before they submit a. Yeah, I mean, the commission did require that that area be maintained as is the wooded area it was shown on project yeah. plans as, and they, you know, the applicant hasn't changed the composition of that area, but there just wasn't that much there. Yeah, but there's not even grass growing there. Look at bare soil. Yeah. And so I would have no, been hesitant to uh, issue anything uh, the, uh, with some vegetative cover. I mean, they're not mowing, um, and that was the you know the the crux of the. Well, there's nothing to mow. <laughs> yeah, there's there's not much there, but you know, at least well, along the, the bank of um, of Broughton's it, Brook, the same brook that the Elm Street application was was near. Um, you know, it's a pretty steep bank and it's not being maintained in any way. Just whatever, whatever's growing is allowed to grow. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm okay so, issuing the certificate if we have a second swing at this, if they're planning to do more other work. Sure. 
So at this point, um, the, uh, the the letter from the consultant was that it's been essentially uh, the order of conditions has been complied with. And so this is what we're essentially doing is uh, making a punctuation mark and saying, OK, that was then um, th that application and its order of conditions have been fulfilled. Um, anything else, we got to come back and ask us um, and we'll explore that possibility when it comes. Is that fair enough? And, and to Sarah's point, mentioned that uh, we'll expect a more robust planting. Yes, the planting plan, plan has got to be. Yeah. Well, I imagine that the applicant probably doesn't want to have a muddy back yard anyway. But I remember when the, this application came before us, it was, so what's the border uh, right along the bank? And now it seems like whatever used to be there is just gone. And it's just, just uh, wet dirt. Yeah. Well, All right, someone uh, want to make a motion to grant the certificate of compliance? Like I said, I don't see vegetation, so I'm hesitant to grant a certificate of compliance. That's just me. Well, so, but the, as I understood the consultant's letter, uh, the conditions were, that we issued have been met. Uh, yeah. We, we didn't have a condition about uh, any vegetation or anything. We required some some plantings. It's it was not robust in any means, but those those plantings have been installed. Um, there just weren't a lot of them. There were eleven, I think. Yeah, I looked at them. I took they're they're in good condition, but they also were planted fairly recently. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you know, this isn't one where the commission wanted to see you know, multiple growing seasons because the number of plantings is so small. Oh, but I'm looking at bare soil, and then there's a whole line of uh, erosion control, you know, silt fence. There's, there's, there's no vegetation before it gets to the silt fence. So if they take the silt fence out, you're not bare soil during the hard rain is going to go right beyond the silphans. And there is a little more grass there than there was in the consultant's photos. Um, I think some of that was just a function of the time of year. Okay, so My, the, the photos I'm looking at aren't, aren't that recent. Yeah, I mean, two weeks this time of year can make a Okay, a pretty big difference, but I, I would definitely I agree off. that there's there is not much out there. <laughs> and and as I recall, the order of conditions they 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 were certain like four of these, six of those. There were some specific individual shrubby kind of plantings they were going to do, not something that would cover the uh, slope. Correct. So we that that may have been our deficiency and not being explicit in our order of conditions about now you got to make sure that the uh, vegetative uh, erosion resistance is enhanced along okay, the way. And we didn't do that. I wasn't sure whether the, uh, you know, like a conservation seed mix was, was required plus the plant. Yeah, we didn't say no, that we, at the time. No, we didn't in this case. And, and we, when the commission did its visits for the prior permit, it was much farther along in the growing season and didn't look this way. Um, you know, had had we done the visits in the early springtime, that might have been a, a resulting yeah. condition. If you look at the, the six pictures in the middle row on the left side, that looks like a downslope that's fully vegetated. Okay, I'm just, I was just, the one that stood out was the silk fence with nothing. Yeah. Oh, yeah just bare soil. I know. Okay, yeah, I do see some other ones where the silk fences, maybe it's at this location up near the building. Yep. But that still slopes down towards something that looks pretty vegetated on the other side of the slope of the uh, silt fence. That could have just been one small area. Okay. Yeah. And one of those pictures is within the, uh, the existing lawn area where the commission agreed that that could be. Uh, continue to be used as long. Yeah. Okay. Okay. They've done what we asked. Pardon me? They've done what we've asked. They've done what we asked as far as uh, the consulting 
the consultants and the photos can tell, we yep. should have asked for more, but we'll yep. have that opportunity when they come back, if, yep. if they okay. come back. All right, someone want to make a motion to grant the certificate of compliance for that uh, order of conditions. So moved. A I'll second. second. Any I'll further second. discussion? If not, all in favor? Sarah? Jen? Yes. Randy? Randy dropped oh, off. Remember he said he, had he to... said that he would. Uh, David? Yes. Paul? Yes. Mason? Yep. And Kevin? Yes. All right. All right. And next, uh, there's a group that wants to use the uh, uh, Montview parcel um, over in, I think that's Ward 3, as I recall. Um, and our, I, I didn't remember that we had a 10 person restriction um, for that or, the, or that the, uh, the, 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 the MCCC, I'm forgetting the full name of the group that is our partner over there. Um, but I, I didn't know they had a 10 person limit, but yeah, somebody wants so to So that applies at every, uh, every conservation area in Greenway. So anytime there's an organized activity with more than 10 people. Oh, it um, has to do with organizing, yeah. okay. The, the, the commission has to approve that. Right. Well, and the, the uh, MCCC people are Okay with this? Yeah, they had they had no concerns at all. All right. Then do we need a a, a vote on that or just a, a sense of the meeting? Uh sense of the meeting should be fine. Anybody have problems with that? Seems like it's a uh level little if you're familiar with it, it's a level little little field in the middle of a neighborhood and i imagine this is just some neighborhood kid graduating and they want to have I'm a city councilor right isn't there a city councilor kind of in the middle of the whole piece the one house that's there uh, and this involves the field area only not the wetlands on the other side yeah all right anybody have any um objections if not um we can probably just say, sure, don't, don't, don't mess it up, but clean it up afterwards, all that stuff. But that's, the the uh, MCCC people are good about that. So great about policing it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Sarah, anything else? Uh, one, we... in, uh, one emergency certification. Let me try and share my screen again. I don't know what's up with, with Zoom. Um, yeah, Sarah it's emailed hell. me about this. Al is not letting you share your screen. Yes, no. So I was notified by the DPW last last Wednesday or last Thursday that there was a water main break on East Hampton Road in between the Hampshire tractor and the gas station. And you know, I, as far as infrastructure, it was actually a pretty good place for a water main break. It was uh, depositing <laughs> itself directly into a stream. Uh, yeah. But DPW did have to go in there to... Um, to clean it up, so let's see. Oh, now it's it working. This time. Maybe. It does, okay. Uh-oh, I get an hour less. Wait, am I have an hour? Cannot oh, was... share your screen, Sarah. <laughs> it's not open it doesn't let me, day. but um, but if you drive down East Hampton Road, you can see that there's um, you know, no hardscaping. It's all erosion control, core logs, and a temporary sill fence, which which DPW will be checking on as the growing season progresses, um, but they they were careful only to remove it, that which was necessary to get the timber mats down to allow their machinery to get in there. And they also picked up all the trash on the site, and there was so much trash it was gross. Oh, oh. <laughs> uh, so the work would, only took a couple of days. So all set. Great. Excellent. And that's it for me. All right. Um, I'll just raise it. Sarah and I have uh, talked briefly about um, encouraging in conservation areas uh, in the future um, milkweed for uh, monarch oh. butterfly migration purposes. And that uh, since that is a perennial, I, which is 
for a long time, I thought, no, no, it makes a million seeds every year. and It just must be an annual, but nope, it's a, it's a perennial and comes back and still makes a million seeds. Um, but uh, like yeah, the, time to, the time to start cultivating it would be in the fall. So this is just a, uh, a heads up that uh, we'll be thinking about, oh, where might we do this and, and cultivate uh, uh, milkweed? Because it, it really, I have a neighbor on, you know, my in-town street near Smith College who just makes sure to put up some milkweed and collects um, six or eight caterpillars every year. Um, and they make sure they turn into monarchs. And so well, just with it, and that's a that's your front yard, maybe a 20 foot square. Uh, with, it, so it, it works uh, if we can cultivate larger areas, hopefully we'll contribute to the survival of those uh, wonderful little bird, uh, uh, insects. So, and do they just harvest the seeds from existing plants? Um, I I haven't done that part of the research yet about, so how, how do you make sure you get milkweed besides, you know, here in Vermont, we have a field where you can't help but get milkweed. So um, I could, uh, but I, I assume I can't transport those seeds across state lines uh, for planting in Massachusetts. So we'll have to figure out how you do it in Massachusetts. And I don't know the answer. Yeah, there there's several local nurseries um, where you can get milkweed seeds and milkweed plants, you know. Oh pretty inexpensively. So that's definitely something we can plan on for the fall. Cool. Uh, just identify some good areas where, the, where they definitely won't be disturbed during the growing season and conditions are right. Nice. Good. All Any right. other heads ups or announcements or uh, other things? One one other quick update. I talked to Chief Ca uh, Chief Casper regarding dog issues at Fitzgerald right. Lake specifically and the, the ACO and her assistant have put together some informational packets and bags to hand out to dog owners, including some treats for the dogs. Um, and they'll be conducting educational campaigns, primarily at Fitzgerald Lake, but also maybe Mineral Hills and a couple other places as as time allows during the, the busy season. And I, I, I think I mentioned that uh, Bob uh, Zimmerman and I met with, uh, and the uh, woman who's on the Leeds um, uh, conservation group, Leeds Community uh, Lead Civic uh, Association yeah. was there as well uh, about uh, uh, talking with the new dog officer who seems uh, really very cooperative and um, very sound and comes from Alaska, but has been doing similar work um, uh, for several years. So I think we have a, a now one and a half or two full-time dog people um, and then a little more space for the chief to assign somebody to do this kind of thing. Do we know what the working um, hours are for the animal control officer? I One's don't. Full -time I don't. And one... Yeah, I mean, I don't know if she's on on call or has specific set hours, or I'm not quite sure. I don't think she's on call because I had what I thought might be a rabid porcupine out in Turkey Hill Road, and I called um, the police station and asked for the animal control officer. And they said, oh, um, they're not on duty right now. And so they sent out two cruisers and we were looking at this porcupine and it had a very unusual staggering gait, but it, we just left it alone. Uh, it was peacefully munching on vegetation, <laughs> but um, it was, it looked like it had a broken right rear leg. And um, uh -huh. Uh -huh. It, so we're standing around there wondering what to do with it. And we left it alone, but the animal control officer wasn't available. I, would have preferred that to the police, but <laughs> oh well. I am touching that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. Anything me. else? Um, Sarah, we wait another meeting or two before we discuss whether we meet all summer or skip a month or things like that. Uh, up, up to the pleasure of the commission, I guess. If people know their vacation schedules right now, and you know, feel free to send them to me. Um, I'll be around all summer, so you know, second. Uh, why, why don't we do that? Send send to Sarah. Um, okay. And when we know we're going to be away, and if there's obvious places where we we're not going to have a uh, the quorum, then that's a good time to choose. Okay, we'll just. Uh, no, huh. in advance, and, and tell applicants to, in advance that that, that won't be great. Either second yeah. or third Thursday, or second or fourth Thursday, we usually be good. And okay. permits actually tend to slow down a little bit in the summer because people have already 
ideally obtain their permits for the construction season. Um, yeah. but sometimes we we need not meet anyway. Um, and we we won't be meeting June eighth, both because I will be away and because we have not received any permits for that meeting. I don't go anywhere anyway, so that's my <laughs> schedule. <laughs> <laughs> and do we have another one in two weeks or no? Uh, I believe we do. Okay. Um, great. I'll let everybody know, but I think we we yeah. did get a couple permits. Okay, okay, great. And 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 Jen, I I will I have through uh, through June a fair amount of activity on the Tapestry Health Board before I rotate off as of June thirtieth. So I'll be looking to you sometime in June to help me get oriented about how to get up to speed for the uh, uh, community preservation 